This 11-page FBI summary of Hillary Clinton's July 2nd interview shows the former Secretary of State could not remember key details about her emails more than two dozen times. Critics aren't buying it. It's implausible. Not someone with her background, experience, training. She's an attorney, 25 years in government, and suddenly she has selective amnesia. It's not plausible. It's not believable. Clinton told FBI agents she could not recall when she got a security clearance. Clinton could not recall briefings or training on the handling of classified information. And Clinton could not recall specialized training for the U.S. government's most closely held secrets, known as special access programs. But the same week Clinton became Secretary of State, she signed two non-disclosure agreements where she said she knew the rules and that violating these agreements could result in criminal charges. Clinton also told the FBI that she could not recall the details surrounding the 2009 setup of the ClintonEmail.com domain, whose servers were housed at their Chappaqua, New York home. Clinton said the personal email account was a matter of convenience. FBI agents do not appear to press Clinton on the issue, further reinforcing Republican criticism of the FBI director and the investigation. Remember James Comey said she was not indicted because he didn't have sufficient evidence on the issue of intent. She said she did it for convenience, but, but, but I didn't see the follow-up questions in the interview I read. The heavily redacted FBI summary also shows Clinton was questioned about the 22 top secret emails too damaging to release for national security reasons. And that questioning included the drone campaign as well as human spying for CIA programs. Tucker? Catherine Harris. Thanks, Aunt Catherine. We'll hear with reaction from a Republican presidential candidates, Governor Mike Huckabee of Arkansas and Dr. Ben Carson. It is great to see you both. Dr. Carson, first to you. This is kind of definitive then. Hillary Clinton says, I didn't know the rules. That's not a plausible explanation, is it? Uh, it's not a plausible explanation, and her failure to remember anything uh, certainly is not a quality that you would want to see in a president. So I'm assuming you buy it then. Do you think she wasn't capable of remembering the most basic rules on handling classified material? Well, it, it doesn't particularly matter. If she wasn't capable of remembering that, she definitely would not be capable of performing the duties of the president. And if she is lying about it, then that disqualifies her too. I think she's disqualified either way you look at it. So, Gov Governor Huck, we just take three steps back. We're finding out about this from the FBI on the afternoon of Labor Day weekend, on a Friday, on a holiday weekend. This is a classic way to bury news that you think is going to be damaging to the principal. The FBI is not a political organization, but this move suggests they're acting for political reasons. Do you think that's true? And if so, how discouraging is that for a law enforcement agency to help a political campaign? Well, the FBI has always been above and beyond the political ramifications. It's one of the reasons that most Americans have an incredibly high respect for the FBI. This hurts the FBI's reputation, hurts James Comey's reputation, but most of all, it damages Hillary Clinton. I mean, for her to claim that she has less memory about what she was briefed on than Jason Bourne knew about his past identity is just not realistic. And I agree with Ben Carson. If she really doesn't remember fundamental facts of national security like this, then she has no business being sworn in as president, and we need to make sure the American people don't make what could be an incredibly irrevocable mistake. So, Dr. Carson, these 60 pages suggest more stories to come in this way. You have Hillary Clinton in the FBI's account losing somehow 13 different PDAs, some cell phones. You have her using her device in foreign countries. You have her with a skiff, which is a, supposed to be a bug-proof room in her house and office, that is not secure. This suggests that she was more vulnerable even than we knew to attacks by foreign intelligence agencies. Do you think we're going to be hearing that story before Election Day? Uh, I hope so, but here's the other thing that we have to consider. Because she had such vital information in such insecure places, uh, I think probably the, the, Jap the, the Chinese, the Russians, and some others probably have some of that information. Now, what would it be like to have a president who could be blackmailed by other nations because they have information that she doesn't want to come out? Well, that is the question. That is absolutely the question. And I think it's a, ma it's a major concern for the intelligence agencies in this country. Governor Huckabee, Tell us, I mean, you, of course, are from Arkansas. You were three-term governor of Arkansas. You know the Clintons very well. They're smart people. They try to cover all the bases. They're paranoid. They're aware of their public perception. Why would Mrs. Clinton behave in a manner this reckless? Why, what would motivate her to do that? Because for so long, Tucker, 
uh, she and her husband have gotten away with uh, living by a different set of rules than everybody else. Uh, you know, we remember back in 2008, the uh, big banks were protected because they were too big to fail. And I think what we have is a Hillary Clinton who thinks she's too big to jail. She thinks that these rules that apply to everybody else in government are, are for them, for the little people, but not for her. And, and that's very troubling. And this is not a political issue. I know it's going to sound like it and coming from me. Look, I don't pretend that I'm nonpartisan. I'm very partisan. I have a very particular point of view. But try to look at this objectively. And, and let's remember that she said, well, she only had one device. Now we know she got rid of 13 different devices. So there's so many things that have just been said that are fundamentally not true. And she can't possibly say that she just didn't remember how many devices that she had when there were 13 of them. So, Dr. Carson, the whole point of America, the whole reason people come here from other countries who yearn to be Americans, is because we're equal under the law, all of us. And right. this puts a lie to that. What do you say to the numerous Americans who are now doing jail time or have felony records for mishandling, in some cases they claim unintentionally, classified information? Well, I, I say I'm, I'm sorry that you are the victims of an unfair system. Uh, and, you know, as, as Governor Huckabee alluded to, this kind of issue, it's really not a Democrat or Republican issue. This goes to the very heart of who we are as a nation, who we are as people. What do we accept? What kinds of leaders do we want to put up in front of our children as examples? If we put somebody up who, who lies uh, as easily as they breathe, and this is our greatest role model, what can we expect from the next generation of Americans? Well, that, that's a deep question. I, I mean, Governor Huckabee, I don't think Hillary Clinton is the worst person in the world at all. But I think that this behavior is clearly unacceptable. There's no defending it at all. And yet Democrats are defending it. Donald Trump has said things that are hard to defend. And a lot of Republicans said, you know, I'm not going to defend it. Like, that's wrong. And they've walked away from him. You haven't seen anything like that on the Democratic side. It's been lockstep robotic support for their candidate. Do you think you're going to see any Democrats of conscience say, I'm sorry, I'm not going to defend this behavior? Publicly, probably not. I've always admired the Democrats for circling the wagons around the people that they're trying to protect, no matter how ridiculous it is. And we've seen that uh, not only with uh, Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton, but with uh, Barack Obama. I mean, they did just always sort of say, no, our side does nothing wrong. But this is troubling, and it needs to be to independent voters People who really want America to be a place where everybody gets treated the same, where Lady Justice is uh, blindfolded and presiding over scales yeah. that balance justice and mercy, not campaign and contributions to the Clinton Foundation on one side of the scale and favors on the other. And that's the kind of White House we would have with Hillary Clinton. Yeah, boy, I don't admire that lockstep at all. No, because I think it betrays the real point of democratic politics, which is not to sort of act on behalf of some principle, but to acquire power and use power. And I don't think that's a good reason to get into politics. But at some, at some point, we have to ask ourselves, who are we? Yeah. And what kind of people are we? And what do we represent? And uh, not what is politically expedient and what will help our party to do better. And if, if that's the road we're going to go down, we're doomed. Man, I hope if Trump ever did something like this, or if, you know, whatever Trump does, I'm not going to be there robotically defending it. You know, stick not. to your principles. You'll feel good about it yourself in the end. Anyway, thank you, gentlemen. It's great to see you both. Thanks for putting that all into context. So I want to ask you about this. Because of Hillary Clinton in hiding, no one's seen her, except for celebrities who are shelling out tens of thousands of dollars to fork over for these big dinners and so forth. I'm going to play the contrarian on this. I think it's a brilliant strategy on her part. She hates talking to the press. We in the press have our feelings hurt because we can't talk to her. She can't, continues to rake in millions of dollars and run all these TV spots in Arizona. Is this a smart strategy for her? Well, I think it's her only strategy. It's her only strategy because she can't answer very, very difficult questions. So there's no upside. And number two, she doesn't really have a program she's going to lay out for America that takes us in a different direction. And 65, 70 percent of the American people believe we're going in the wrong direction. So, so long as she remains slightly ahead or even even, I think she's going to play um, high, high the ball. Well, uh, she's going to play prevent defense. Now, I always get annoyed when my football team plays prevent defense because that's usually when the other team comes from behind and beats you. Right? Right. And it's not a very noble strategy. I mean. And I think, uh, I think she's dying by a thousand cuts. And she doesn't realize it. I think she's bleeding to death. The uh, email 
stories and the Clinton Foundation stories and the State Department pay for play stories would have destroyed a candidate who gets less protection from the press but I think your than football, she does. I think your football analogy is apt because it's the fourth quarter. We only have a few weeks till early voting. Yeah, but uh, he's, he's um, um, uh, Donald Trump has caught up in most of the polls to either ahead even or within the margin of error in enough of the battleground states so that he can win. National poll, Los Angeles Times, he's ahead by three. A couple of the national polls are very, very tight. And uh, this is with him having spent virtually no money and her spending about $200 million on the air. And his ad just started, you know, four days ago. Right. So um, she's eventually, I think, going to get drawn out because eventually I think he's going to take a lead. Hmm. And uh, she's going to get drawn out and she's going to have to answer. For example, I read the entire FBI report twice. <laughs> For some reason, they printed it in a little print. Yeah, I noticed. <laughs> And they put it out late on a Friday afternoon. Yes, they did. Yeah, I, it was hard to read, wasn't it? Very. Uh, I know. But worth it. Uh, uh, really worth it. And I underlined it. And uh, I've read probably 5,000 FBI 302s, 10,000 in my life as a prosecutor. Uh, when she says that she didn't know that it was confidential information, because at the beginning of the paragraph, there was a C, a capital C. Is she kidding? Well, she goes on to say... Uh, because she thought, she thought it was an alphabetical order. Now, if I were cross-examining, I would say, well, did you ever see an A or a B or a D? Well, that's <laughs> right. a good point. But then she said, but I had a brain injury, so I was incapable well, so we, of remembering. We, we, we have only two answers to why she doesn't know, why the Secretary of State of the United States doesn't know that a C in front of a paragraph means confidential information. One, she's stupid. Or two, she's lying. Well, possibly three, her brain injury has made her incompetent. I don't know. I happen to think it's the middle one, but I cannot believe that we had a Secretary of State who doesn't know that if you put a C in front of a paragraph in a sensitive document, that means confidential. Uh, she can't remember 26 things like, did she get a briefing on how to handle uh, top secret information? I remember the briefing I got on doing it, and it was 25 or 30 years ago. But so wait a second, then why aren't questions about her health? She seems perfectly healthy, just to be clear, she seems healthy when I, I see her. I don't know if she's healthy but or she's not But people ask questions, and they're attacked by Senator Amy Klobuchar of Minnesota the other day, for example, as, quote, sexist. And yet she herself says, my health prevented me from digesting and retaining information. So why are these questions not totally valid? Well, she was Secretary of State at the time. She should, she should have, uh, uh, she should have uh, resigned. We had a Secretary of State who couldn't remember whether uh, she had a, a, a briefing. Also, her briefing by the, by, the secret, um, by the CIA on how to handle classified information took place before her so-called brain injury. Right. Uh, why can't she remember that? I can remember it. Why can't she remember it? Uh, she can't remember her exit interview or whether there was one with the CIA. There always is. You're given an interview and you're told, basically you're told how to forget classified information. 26 different occasions on which she can't remember. Most of them strike me more as lies than they do as um, uh, things she can't remember. I think it's the liar's retreat. I can't remember. I don't recall rather than brain injury. But that's my own personal opinion. Mr. Mayor, when you first started to react to this, you mentioned the small print and that it was just before a holiday weekend, which seems to be the timing of this. Are you questioning the credibility of the FBI's investigation? Well, they, they, I, 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 it's very strange. A number of these things have been put out on holiday weekends. The interview of her was rushed. The, uh, when I read it, there are n numerous follow-up questions, like that C. Uh, the minute she said to me, I didn't know that a C meant confidential information, I would have said, well, have you ever seen one with an A, B, C, and D? Because she said she thought it was an alphabetical order. Well, she didn't. And then I would have said, well, you know, what's wrong with you? If you didn't know, if you didn't know the basics of classified information, how could you possibly have been our Secretary of State? And how can you possibly be our president? She lied completely about having turned over all her emails. She didn't, she didn't turn over thousands of emails. But we're not talking about three or four. We're talking about thousands. She lied completely about the fact that the email she didn't turn over, she said they didn't c contain any confidential or classified information. They're filled with confidential and classified information, including 68 separate documents that are so secret they can't even be revealed but, now. But to Anna's question, if the these are massive, these are massive uh, memory lapses, 
which I don't, which I don't, I don't think she is massively brain damaged. But if the but FBI, I do think she's a massive liar. If the FBI is trying to minimize the effect of those lies, as Anna and just asked you. Doesn't that mean the system itself, the justice system, is corrupt at a high level, and that's bad? Well, I, you know, I, I think you, you read that, and as I wrote uh, in an op-ed piece, having prosecuted, uh, or supervised the prosecutor, 5,000 cases, you can't not prosecute her. I mean, the, uh, the, the, that report y yells out for a prosecution. <laughs> I mean, she violated so many laws, obstruction of justice. Uh, how about destroying uh, her her um, smartphones using a hammer. Well, I mean, criminals the, do that. How about are, using bleach bit? These are, the, these are the things, these are all the things that in a criminal case, if, you, if you're an experienced prosecutor, these are the things you use to prove intent. Somebody threw the gun away. Right. Somebody filed uh, the serial number off. Somebody uh, in, in a white collar case. Somebody destroyed the records. Well, these are the things that Donald Trump has been talking about. While Hillary Clinton is not doing press conferences, Hillary Clinton, uh, Donald Trump, out in Detroit speaking to African Americans. It's amazing to listen to the liberal press sort of falling over themselves as they watch Donald Trump try to court the black vote. Um, and he's done it a couple of times. And it seems like the liberal press can't stand it. They come out of the woodwork. <laughs> yeah. They get so upset about it. Like, how dare you come in here and talk to black people? Sure, we own this vote. I mean, you know, right. we, own, this boss, we you? own this vote. And the reality is they've been criticizing Republicans for 40 years for not reaching out. <laughs> so you right. can't win. If you, if you don't reach out, you're a racist. And if you do reach out, you're a racist. The reality is, and here, here's why I think the speech was so important and historic in many ways. Donald Trump went to the African-American community with what I call our solutions, conservative solutions, which is what I did in New York. And I'd like to compare New York to Detroit. When I took over New York in 1994, we had 1.1 million people on welfare. When I left, it was 500,000 people. We had 10.5% unemployment. When I left, we had 5% unemployment. And we had approximately per capita the same kind of murders they have in Chicago and we went down to something like 500 where we reduced it by 65 percent and I utilized all conservative principles I didn't increase welfare I didn't increase food stamps I didn't increase dependency I made people on welfare work I, made, I incentivized my welfare workers to find work and I said to people in the poor communities of New York City which are not all minority I'm going to restore for you the ladder to success in America, which is a good job and a good education. If I give you those two things, now it's up to you to succeed. And what you've been deprived of by the Democratic Party and the Democratic leadership in all these cities is both a good education, rotten school systems, and Hillary can't move on that because the teachers union owns her. Of course, right. And no jobs because you're taxing so high. Nobody has room to build or grow. While you're here, can I ask you some fashion advice? We have some, a picture of you in a hat, a new hat. Oh, yeah, A one. similar hat to Donald Trump's hat, but it says, what does it say? <laughs> it and what says, does it mean? It says, um, make Mexico great also. And the <laughs> idea of that was that when we went to uh, Mexico to meet with the president, we had, uh, the Trump campaign had 40 hats made up like that. And we were going we to give them 20. We were going to keep 20. Well, they, they took 38 of them. And we only had two left. <laughs> Did the president of Mexico take one? Oh, yes. Yeah, he took one. Did he wear it? I don't know if he wore it, but he took it. And then all his staff would, gra would grab it in the bag and take it. And uh, huh. the whole idea of that is we can do this in a cooperative way with Mexico. The reality is we have an illegal immigration problem coming over the border from Mexico. They have an illegal immigration problem on their southern border yeah. from Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador. Almost as bad, if not worse, than ours. Some of those people that come from those countries stay in Mexico. Some of those are coming across the border with us. So in, in some ways, there's more empathy for our problem than you realize in Mexico. Plus, what we found out in the meetings, which Donald Trump, in which Donald Trump, I, I wish it could have been uh, just shown on television. Uh, his understanding of trade is really terrific. And what we both realized is we, ha we have a common problem, China. Our imbalance with Mexico is one thing. Our imbalance with China is dramatic. Of course. And and their, their imbalance with China is about like ours. And uh, we talked about how we could work together on joint cases in which uh, they're doing the illegal dumping, they're right. vi violating rules. And maybe if the United States and Mexico went together on these things, we would have a bigger impact. And so they'd be welcomed on the tarmac just like President Obama was. <laughs>
Just in time for the holiday weekend when they didn't think you were paying attention, the FBI, working on behalf of the Hillary campaign, released a report detailing its interview with Hillary Clinton. It including bombshells like this, she blamed a concussion for failing to remember key security briefings at all. She had no memory of it. Did the press cover that at all? Well, here to discuss it, senior fellow with the Independent Women's Voice, Julie Gunlock. Julie, it's good to see you. Thanks for having so, me. So I thought it was kind of a big story. Hillary Clinton, according to the FBI, said she didn't remember entire briefings and couldn't go to work except for a few hours a day because of a brain injury. That's a story, no? I didn't read that somehow in the New York Times. It's absolutely a story. Look, I think that there's no doubt that the press is in the bag for Hillary Clinton, but now it appears they're not just giving her a pass. They're concealing things from the American public, things that are really important for the electorate to know. It's not the press's job to determine what voters should know. And yet you have a press that's saying, this isn't important. I think the health of the candidate is critical, and the, and the voters should have that information. Well, I think so, too. And I, I'd like to see Trump's full you know, health report. I actually would, and a lot of people have jumped on his doctor for being flaky, et cetera. Fine, that's fine with me. But there's no coverage at all of Hillary's health, and that lets no. you know that they're taking sides pretty no, aggressively. And when you and when you compare it to other candidates, John McCain, even Mitt Romney, um, they, were, they were saying, is he suitable? Does he get too angry? Um, Ronald Reagan, for goodness sake. Um, so, you know, when you look at how the press has hammered uh, people on the right, uh, it, it, it's not consistent. So I hate to keep beating up in the New York Times, but it was once the most serious newspaper in the world, <laughs> and it does set the tone for a lot of other news coverage still as kind of a legacy effect back from back when it was a serious newspaper. Here is the news account. I'm just reading cold. The first paragraph of the news account of Trump's meeting at the black church yesterday. This is in this morning's New York Times. Verbatim quote, Donald J. Trump, who has campaigned for president as a blunt provocateur, dismissing complaints of racial insensitivity as political correctness, took an uncharacteristic step on Saturday. He visited a black church for the first time and tried to blend in. So here's what we learned in the very first paragraph of a, air quotes, news story. Trump's a racist, and yet he went to a black church anyway and tried to pretend that he belonged there. Like, that's a news story? The press cannot control themselves anymore. They're absolutely deranged when it comes to their opposition on, on Trump. And it's really disturbing how they, in news stories, these are news stories they can't help but editorialize. Um, so I think the voters are, are really having a hard time tuning this out. Um, again, Hillary, she has total contempt for the voter, total contempt for the press. The press doesn't mind. And what's so frightening about this is that a free and unbiased press is so important to our yes. democracy. They diminish themselves when they give Hillary a, a pass and editorialize on Trump. And it's not because they're liberal, though they are. It's because they see the establishment under threat from middle America and they are rushing to the rescue because they are members of that establishment. That's what it's about, I think. I, again, again, it's a matter of the press determining what the voters should know about. They don't think that Hillary's health and her judgment, I mean, th this stuff that came out from the FBI is, is amazing. And when you couple it with the emails and um, Abedin's information, it's, it's pretty remarkable how fragile and, and really kind of um, confused she gets. So I think the voters are owed this information from the press. Yeah, well, I'm giving up my time subscription for the first time in my life because it's garbage and propaganda. <laughs> and it's driving me crazy. Great to see you, Julie. Thanks for having me. In Hillary Clinton's America, the system stays rigged against Americans. Syrian refugees flood in. Illegal immigrants convicted of committing crimes get to stay. Collecting Social Security benefits, skipping the line. Our border open, it's more of the same, but worse. Donald Trump's America is secure. Terrorist and dangerous criminals kept out. The border secure, our families safe. Change that makes America safe again. Donald Trump for president. I'm Donald Trump, and I approve this message.